I shipped church van 3,000 miles from LA. I told these guys I was willing to help. I don't think they really want my help. Put this in the hold open so it looks like I'm working on my own. <laughs> And on today's episode, we finally get to work on the church van. First, we gotta go to North Carolina. That's right, I shipped church van about 3,000 miles from LA to you join off-road because they are the best at doing four-wheel drive swaps on the van. And we are here for the next couple days to get all of that done and then eventually drive the van back to California. So that's what we're here for. Let's do it. All right, so uh, these boys are really itching to get working. Like. I think they're kind of annoyed that we're taking so long. This truck's been sitting here for months and they're like, let's just get it done and get it out. Yeah. All right, so quick intro for everybody. I'm Steven, Hunter, I'm Connor. All right, and I'm gonna try not to be too much in these guys' way, helping out, because I think they're looking like helping. We'll get this done in a day if you turn the damn cameras off. While we, Chris, you're gonna run us through what the kit is, everything, because this is everything that's going on in the truck, which actually kind of seems like a lot when you lay it all out. These guys said that you yeah. haven't laid out parts in forever. Like we this, don't normally do this now. So it's very appreci rare appreciate it. This, this is yeah. what you need to do for you. We did YouTube. this just for you. Yeah, so we started doing a DIY four wheel drive van conversion kit for the E Series in 2007 while I was still in California. A couple of buddies talked me into it after I built my van, Vanaconda. And at first I did it as like a one time, all right, one and done. I made 15 kits, said, get them while you can. I promoted them on Yahoo groups. Remember back in the day when that's the only way we really had. Wow. Man, you're going back. About. You're going back. Yeah. So our, we started with this. This is our spring hangers. This is the very first part I ever made, and it's nothing has changed since then, since 2007. And now we've got, I don't know, a little over 1,000 kits on the road, about 1,000 spring hangers that we've sold. And I partnered up with a guy local that could build some parts, and then we just started designing stuff, making them better and better, and then offering more into a complete conversion kit. So now... You know, we have we have this complete kit that we sell, so you can be anywhere. You can ship you a kit and kind of hold your hand through the process of making your van full wheel drive. Which I could have done, but one, this was kind of the easy button to let these guys help me yeah. do it. And two, I like you don't have to twist my arm for a cross country road trip, so driving it back home was a big kind of lore of all this. So, yeah. all right, so walk us through like yeah. obviously, I guess this is kind of the big part of it the is the part, front yeah, axle. Is, is the axle? Our kit is based around the '99 to '04 F series. Truck. We don't change anything from C forging to C forging. It's, it's the stock spring hangers uh, or you know, spring pads. All we do is cut off the stock track bar and steering stabilizer bracket. So that enables the DIY guy to get his own axle locally. You don't have to get an axle from us or ship an axle. They can pick it up at a local junkyard and rebuild it themselves and put it under the van. Pretty awesome. This is our stage three front axle, so it's got a lot of bad new parts on it. Everything from the knuckles out is sourced from Dynatrack. It also has 14 and a half inch diameter rotors. The stock axles come with a 12 inch rotor, so much more stopping power and bigger brakes. And this package still fits under a 17 inch wheel, which is cool. Side, we've got 456 gears from Yukon and a Yukon Master Bearing Kit and a Detroit True Track differential. So, yeah, 35 spline stub shafts, 456 gears. Did I mention that? Going to mm -hmm. 456 on this 6 liter with 35s with the 5 speed that works out really well. We did our U joint diff cover and crossover steering. So we run crossover steering on everything we build. A normal you know, drag link would come from the steering box and usually connect to the tie rod. So the crossover steering, the drag link, and you'll see once it's installed, will come across the top of the leaf spring and connect to the steering arm. So it gives you a nice flat drag link, which eliminates the possibility of bump steer and um, makes things last longer. But the biggest benefit is clearance and drivability and that drag link angle. All right, so what's next? All the stuff to secure that in here. Yeah, exactly. So our spring hangers will bolt to the frame. You have to drill it, of course, and these have already been pre-drilled. We pre-drilled the frame. And then this is the rest of the stuff we make. Um, these are our U-bolt plates, slash track bar, slash uh, shock mounts, uh, the shackle sleeves that get welded into the frame. We get those machined. These upper shock mounts, you know, sway bars from Ford, sway bars with strap and bushings from Ford. Brake lines, we have custom brake lines made for all of our kits. We're running a Fox 2.0 shock on this setup, front and rear. Uh, these are leaf springs, which get custom made for us by Alcan Spring in Colorado. They ride great and 
Um, the leaf spring just gives us a more durable setup overall. This table has more, so we got our T-case here. The beauty of the, the 5R110 transmission mm -hmm. is we can make it full drive while it's in the van. We don't have to pull the transmission or rebuild it. So we're literally going to pull the tail housing off, swap the output shaft, and then put a full drive uh, tail housing on, and then the T-case will pull right up. So this is the NV271 T-case. Pretty much standard T-case that came in the four trucks from 99 to 2009, 10 maybe in the trucks. Somebody can correct, correct me on that. But we use a NV271 Transfer Case Express build it for us. They do a full, full rebuild and they set the spline count to what we want. We do a manual shift T-case on everything. Again, for reliability and simplicity. So we've got the rear axle stuff yard sale here. This is the Ox Locker. Um, the Ox used its own cover because the cable will actually go through the cover to engage the fork to lock it, and we've got some 456 gears also from Yukon. And here's the, the lever I showed you, talked about earlier. We're going to put this right behind your TK shifter. This is how you're going to engage the rear locker. And I just broke it, not really. <laughs> but you get the idea. Sweet. All right, it's time to go on a little shopping spree. We got a ton of stuff that we need to pick up for this project. That's like everything from a winch to shocks to a bunch of different accessories and also really important thing wheels so here we are four wheel parts in north carolina we'll go see what they got let's go check them out all right time to do a little shopping We'll take uh, all of these. All right, we're gonna use set these for the front and the rear. And we'll do, we'll do set these, 17. We're gonna need some of these. That's nice, we'll take one of those too. All right, we're gonna need four of these, a bunch of those. All right, well, I don't actually need any more Hoonigan t-shirts, trust me. You probably do, so even if you don't need truck stuff, you should come to Four Wheel Parts. Get your Hoonigan gear. Look, they got hoodies, a bunch of gear. Even have hats. We'll take it all. So literally walked into the other room for two minutes and came back. If you guys, like if there was ever like a van race team, I would definitely want you guys to be my pit crew. Like we can make that happen. I told these guys I was willing to help. I don't think they really want my help. <laughs> this is clearly some, how many of these do you think you've done? Probably 80. 80 of them? Well, since he's been here, yeah. How many have you done? Been here nine years, man. That's a lot more than me. That's a lot. Do you ever work on other stuff? Nope. <laughs> Man, he says that with a bit of resentment. <laughs> I hate it here. All right, so what, what phase are we at right now? Because they've already dropped the whole front end. Yeah, front end's out. Um, they're prepping to install the spring hangers that we've already pre-drilled. And then we're going to get the plasma out and cut the shackle sleeve holes, cut the engine cross member, and then weld the shackle sleeves in and weld the upper shock mounts in. And then all the cutting and welding is done. Yeah, then hang springs. Yeah. So the fuel tank's coming out right now. So we got to... We're gonna chop the cap of the fuel tank off. We're gonna lose three gallons of capacity to make room for the tea case. So how much of this do you cut off? Just, we cut it right here. So it's gonna lose just this. Oh, okay. It's about three gallons. So we'll get, we'll send, now this will get sent over to the fab guys and they will drain it, mm -hmm. clean it out, cut it and weld it. Not all vans need this. Right. You know, obviously the, any cutaway chassis or the fuel tank in the back doesn't need this. And so the late model 5.4 vans don't need to have a plastic fuel tank. Mm -hmm. And it just barely fits with the PK in it. And we'll look and see the condition of your tank and see if it's laminated. How often does that happen? About 40, 50 percent of it. Oh, time. really? Yeah. And we'll know soon. Hopefully not, but it's pretty common. So if that's laminating, then we're going to switch gears. We usually have at least one or two fuel tanks around if that happens. If it's real bad, we'll replace the tank. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, he's missing his foot. I see flakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely starting to de huh? For sure. Yeah, I'm going to see if we have a... Very lucky to have been around motorsports for a long time, and what I've learned is brakes are absolutely crucial to going fast. So, I like to use Hawk pads because they have a pad for all kinds of motorsports. Anything from circle track, rally, road racing, autocross, everything in between, they have something for you. And guess what, here's the best part. You don't need a big brake kit to stop well. It's two things. You need the right pad, and you need really good fluid. And Hawk has both of those on their website for you. Hawk pads can live in up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit of operating temp. That's insane. And it's all from the same Hawk pad that you could buy. So head over to hawkperformance.com. It's a super useful website. Get the right pad for you. Save your money on that big brake kit. Is that the magic jig? This is our CK jig. It's the magic jig. It locates the rear spring mount in the frame. So we'll plasma cut that out and we weld in this big old sleeve. Sweet. All right, you want to explain to me what you're doing now? So I just cut the front cross member, so we clear the pumpkin at a little bit more clearance on the front axle. And we just, you know, turn it out. That worked. Oh, so you got a little jig here too, just so you know kind of where your line, you just follow that line with right. the plasma. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna level these sleeves in the frame and kick out a little bit because the frame kicks in. And so we'll kick it out to meet our spring hangers on the front side. We'll weld those in. And then we'll weld our shock tabs up here. That gives it a kick forward because we do an axle push on the front springs. How much does the axle move forward on this kit? An inch. An inch? Sounds about right. So I've spent pretty much the past uh, two hours just being in the way. I feel like these guys uh, are absolute machines. They know exactly what to do. And every time I try to step into help, they kind of just give me that look and they, that's cute, but uh, we got this. So I guess we're gonna hang out, watch the rest of the truck I built, try to walk you through. If we can keep up, because they literally are hitting it. They're like double teaming the truck. There's like two dudes in the back, one dude in the front. Hey, yo. And uh, it's hard to even keep up. Like both of us are on cameras trying to just keep up with how fast they're moving through all this. They said they normally can get through this entire build in a day. But I think from a DIY side, like looking at this, having never done this before, my guess is it would take like two full weeks for us to do it. And these guys just know every size, everything they need to do. They've got all their jigs, they got everything ready. I will say like, I would be super confident to just go do it on my own. But at the same time, I'm pretty happy these guys are gonna get it done like in probably a day and a half. And then next episode, we'll do all the other stuff, bumpers and everything else. But my guess is by the end of the day, they're gonna have this thing back on its wheels. We don't have tires yet, so it'll be back on the stock wheels, but they're gonna have it that far, which is kind of crazy how quickly these guys are moving. But yeah, anyway, stay, uh, stay up to speed. So now that they've got the rear down, and you can see what they've done, they actually have like this little rack that they built, which is great because that way they don't even have to pull the rear completely out of the vehicle. They just drop it down, which means that they can keep like parking brake cables and a bunch of the lines already kind of in place, change out the diff and the gearing, get that all set up, and then throw the new springs in, and then put this right back up. Like I said, you guys got this down to a process, but, you know, if you do this yourself, you know, that's basically just jack stands. You can probably do all this, you know, in your yard. Get to do it. Oh, 
Oh, this is my moment? Oh, I'll be oh, watching it? Yeah, and that's like I actually worked on my vehicle. Okay. Slide it up on her, right? Boom, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> done. You got it sick. That's typical, right? You gotta drop the nuts. Yeah, I just, just put this put this in the um, cold open, so it looks like I'm working on my on my own truck. <laughs> so just the style of editing, you guys will think I built my truck now. All right, so what do you got going on now? So right now I'm mating the ring gear to the ox locker for the rear. What is, uh, what's the factory gearing? Uh, it was most likely 373, and we are going to a 456. Which will make up for 35s and then eventually 37s. I was like, I'm gonna do 35s, and I got here, and I saw all the trucks on 37s, and I was like, no, I guess I'll do 37s <laughs> later. <laughs> I wonder why that would happen. Weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is this it? Is, eh, parts of the clutch pack. May or may not be from smoking Larry Chen. Cut to that footage. So how many variations do you have of this? Like from the first one you built to what this is now? Like how many like times have brackets? you changed it? Yeah. Probably only like twice. Oh really? Yeah. And honestly we only changed these just because of the Fox shocks when we switched to Bill Stein to Fox. Yeah. They have a much bigger head on them. And oh. that's the only thing we So changed. just changing the cup size. Yeah. Yeah, just to make gain a little clearance. But yeah, no. The upper track bar mount's been through a few revisions, but these have stayed the same since we since we designed them years ago. Well, it's officially a 4x4 four four van. Kind of. I mean, Once, it, it, these are once it has the front axle, it's pretty yeah, much... it's still a free runner. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. All before lunch, boys. Oh yeah, we started late too. Late start, but before lunch. These are, guys already got both axles in, ready to go. Insert below comments about how this is the only reason I get a project finished is because you joined finished it for me. It's time for lunch. Snack break, Bojangles. <laughs> you haven't, if you haven't visited the South, you don't know what living is. Until you've had a Bojangles biscuit. By the way, can we just... Iced tea. Steep it like I mean it. So, tell me what you've done so far. So you had to remove the tail shaft. Yeah, on the 5R110s, all we have to do is change the output shaft and the tail housing to adapt the T-case. And you can do that all with the transmission just still in the vehicle. In the vehicle, yes. That makes it really nice and simple. Looking forward, thinking ahead for you. Looking forward, we are going to put the T-case up here in just a minute, make sure it's all bolted down nice and tight, and then we'll check our drive shaft dimensions, so make sure they fit and then we will start on the four-wheel drive shifter and getting those cut and ready to go. Sweet. All right, so now that this is all in, walk us through kind of the design so spring hangers are installed, obviously the front springs are installed, shackle sleeves are welded into the frame. Uh, we've got our shackles, everything bolted up and greased and lubed and pretty. Uh, we drilled for the sway bar, sway bar links are in, sway bar is installed also. Here's the stage three axle with the Dynatrack hubs and the, the Dynatrack Dynalock hubs. These are super nice, I have them on the flatbed. Single Fox 2.0 shock, we'll pull these bags later. Crossover steering, so that's what I talked about earlier, where the drag link goes from the pitman arm all the way to the steering arm. You can see it's pretty, almost flat here, and we're still at droop, so yep. the suspension compresses it'll flat now. Uh, we did put a longer pitman arm on it, and yeah, got a straight tie rod. U-bolt uh, plates, 
bolted up. So this is a U-bolt plate and the track bar mount and the shock mount. And the driver's side is just U-bolt plate and the shock mount. So yeah, diff's full, front diff vent is full. You got the brake lines and the ABS line for the passenger side, P-clamp to the cross member. And yeah, we're pretty much done now. We're ready for uh, to bleed the brakes and ready for wheels and tires. That's pretty quick. By the way, I, I love this little, uh, little yeah. carb spring, just yeah. keeping it keeping it in place. Yeah, it's like, um, the brake lines can, you know, it's when you're turning, um, the tire can, can touch them because they're pretty long. So this just kind of tucks them to the frame and keeps them where they need to be. I'm assuming that this gets, I saw them solder this up, which is the ABS line. Yeah. I know it goes to the old connector, but do you guys also lengthen them for length, or is it kind of? Uh, no, the, the the new sensors come with plenty of length, so we actually shorten them. Oh, um, really? During oh, the soldering okay. process, we'll shorten them, yeah. So you still have your stock connector, but we just make a connection in there to solder the lines together. Sweet. I'm just sitting here like contemplating my life realizing that these guys got more done in a day than we typically get done in an entire month at Hoonigan. I mean like like to be honest if, if this was a Hoonigan show we would have milked this into like nine episodes. You got basically the whole build in one day. I mean these guys got almost everything done. Right now we're just waiting on stuff. We're waiting on a gas tank, we're waiting on drive shafts, we're waiting on tires to show up. Yeah and then tomorrow the next episode for you guys is gonna be Bunch of other stuff because that's the four wheel swap part, but we're also doing bumpers, front and rear, lights, onboard air, and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, get a whole bunch done tomorrow. Man, this makes me just like question everything. I really should give up working on cars. I'm clearly not good at it. Anyway, catch us next time. Ugh, I just woke up from a little nap while these guys are out here working. Yeah. Yeah, they love me already. Can I launch a boat from the front? That's what I'm kind of a little more curious yeah, yeah, about. <laughs>